Shall in life learn not to ask too much from Allah It's contrary to what everyone thinks when Allah is saying, istajibu that ask me. But unfortunately in today's age with bad character people keep asking Allah and then saying, nothing happening therefore I'm giving up because life became like McDonald's and your salah became like a drive through microphone that I want two hamburgers, one fry and a diet soda please. And when it doesn't come and comes wrong or comes different the anger and shaitan plays with you and says, look your prayer's not working, why you keep making prayer, why you have to do these things, stop it. And then the nafs and shaitan become shariq and partners and make the person to lose faith. And the turuqs come and teach, if you have good manners and you're asking not in that way that demanding, okay no problem. But the higher reality, Ya Rabbi you know best please grant me light, grant me your protection, grant me your rida and satisfaction. You know what I don't know and you know what difficulties are facing me, Ya Rabbi protect me. And that is a du'a always accepted and you feel the protection immediately. And you don't know what type of difficulties Allah pushed away and what type of ni'mat begin to flow. But the du'as that are too detailed that take this, I want this, I have this, I have this, 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 then always ask yourself, is this like a McDonald's? Is this like a drive through where I'm, I'm just making all sorts of requests and then I'm becoming frustrated when Allah not submitting to me, astaghfirullah? And instead it was supposed to be me submitting to Allah. It's not about what you want and what you keep asking for but to be happy with what Allah sends. And just in these day and this age is that just protect me, protect me from insanity, protect me from waswas, protect me from every type of bad energy that now is just everywhere. That trying to whisper into me that, Ya Rabbi just grant me that ni'mat. The less we ask the happier we should be because when we begin to ask we have now expectations that they should be happening and that's incorrect. There are many reasons why Allah is not answering. Most people's du'as are as if they're asking Allah let me enter into a fire of Jahannam please. Because when they come to a shaykh and ask, well, what kind of question was that? What kind of asking was that? What kind of request were you asking? You're literally asking for yourself to be put into difficulty. If Allah loves you of course He's not going to grant you. It's like your child coming and said, please I want to put my hand in the pot in the kitchen. Why are you not letting me? His ni'mat is that he doesn't. He says, I know that what I give to you and what I'm doing and dealing with you any more than that and you're going to be in harm, you're going to be lost and you're going to be in difficulty. And everything that I'm sending to you is for a specific reason that you perfect your adab, perfect your character, perfect your way and your understanding. Every type of difficulty in your life it's not about how to get rid of it, there's somebody who's continuously, this is not going to work, this is not working, this is not working, this is not working. It wasn't about you getting rid of the difficulty, it was about you living with the difficulty. Allah sent it for a reason, not to get rid of it and then be upset that it's not granting me a healing, it's not granting me a cure, it's not granting me a way out but how to live with difficulty and still be happy and content with Allah to have a sense of love, Ya Rabbi you know best, I'm your weak servant, have pity upon my weakness. Then Allah said, yeah I'm pitying your weakness, as a matter of fact it's I'm now on your side. You seem to be humbly asking me, crying to me every night and I will obliterate your difficulty. But when it's a challenge, why are you not doing it? I'm doing this, I said this, I gave this. Then it become more like a, you're competing with that Divinely Presence. So only a, a suggestion always for myself, ask less, be content with the difficulty he gives. So I have this difficulty, yeah it could have been worse, you could have been given cancer. 
You could have been given many difficult things and the person who has cancer you could have been given something else. Whatever Allah gave He knows exactly what He's giving. It's not about getting rid of it, it's about living with it. Be content, make your prayers to be, Ya Rabbi have sabr, I have patience, grant me your ridha. Through this difficulty you're cleaning me, bring me closer to Sayyidina Muhammad and that's all I want Ya Rabbi. If I have a difficulty in finances and difficulty, Allah has a reason. You didn't give it so He's now taking it. So Ya Rabbi you're no best, you're no best because when Allah loves you He's not leaving you to yourself where you didn't give what you were supposed to give and you thought you can cheat your way into paradise, He'll take it from you. So then you say, oh Alhamdulillah, Allah took it. He still wants to deal with me. So Alhamdulillah, whatever is coming it has a tremendous hikmah and wisdom. Grant us the patience and sabr. That's why on these nights of tafakkur this is a power that can't be understood. That when you stop in life and just contemplate, put your head onto the ground and cry through your difficulty, I'm not asking to change it, Ya Rabbi grant me a strength to forbear what I'm going through. And when you're patient with Allah, patient with Allah you begin to get a hikmah into your heart. Oh that's why you took it, that's why this happened, that's why you cleaned me by this. And that patience is what builds faith. When the servant reaches a point in which they give up trying to ask Allah and just know that you're in full control I don't have any idea of these coordinates and I'm just in an ocean of Sallu Alayhi Wa Sallimu Taslim. Taslima is only you become beautiful by taslim. You don't get taslima without taslim. The beauty and the fragrance we're trying to achieve from the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad of taslima is through taslim. So first step was to taslim, just pray and praise upon the Divinely Presence upon Sayyidina Muhammad and then submit. As we submit the fragrance and the beauty of taslima will begin to come out because the servant is submitting to the condition in which he's been put by his Lord. And is not trying to run from it but trying to face it. Your fate is not something you run away from, hide and get somebody to relieve you from it. But Imam Ali said, what? Whatever your fate is, face it and run into it. InshaAllah. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. Welcome to Muhammadan Way YouTube channel your premier destination for videos on Sufi spirituality, classical Islamic teachings and realities of the soul. With a library of over a thousand videos and new titles uploaded weekly, join us to discover true meaning and inner peace in our often troubled world. Click the link now to subscribe.